Rascal here. And Mama, welcome to Pause on Animation. In today's podcast, we're covering another DC animated movie, this time Justice League The Flashpoint Paradox. And this movie is based on The Flash's most famous storyline as he travels to the past to save his mom from being killed, only to discover an entirely different Earth after returning. So, why does this sound so familiar? Mm, you'll find out. And before we start, be sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification on future podcasts and on the pause video. Absolutely. We'd actually seen this before years ago, and we rented it from Redbox, mm -hmm. once upon a time. Yes. And then we actually found this as a dollar store find. Mm -hmm. Or, do yeah, a dollar store find. And yep. we got it and said, hey, let's watch it again. And the thing about this movie is, it was really well done, and the time it came out, it was kind of different for a DC animated movie. Because usually the movies were more serious but there was hope mm -hmm. and there were happy endings and there were things that gave the viewer hope and an outlook that this was going to turn out fine this is the first movie that <laughs> entirely throughout the movie it seemed like it was hopeless uh, yeah and I used to say that was really different for DC at that time because now, unfortunately, a lot of their movies seem to have that same theme, whether it be anime, live action, movie, show, what have you. 2013, by the way. Yeah. And now, you know, the whole meme used to be Marvel would be the bright and happy, colorful company, and DC would be the dark, grim, brooding, be like the entire thing was Batman. That would be the whole thing. And this is the example of being the brooding movie because it is, I think, a well done story, but it's just incredibly dark. And this is when they were testing to see how much violence they could get away with in their animated films underneath a PG 13 rating. They should have never had a PG 13 rating. Right. You would have <laughs> thought this would be the first R rated DC yes, movie. Definitely. And as we said, it was not only really, really dark and seemed really, really hopeless. But the balance was graphic. And you saw people being taken out. It wasn't off screen, use your imagination. Everything got seen. Yeah, it Everything. was like it was like invincible. It wasn't it wasn't even like minor, like they get hurt, you don't see nothing and they're gone. Like you see everything come out of their body and it's like you sure this is 2013? I think it was ahead of its time. It definitely was, because you can see when watching this movie where a lot of the storylines for the CW's The Flash series came from. Yes. It looks like the entire series, actually, Rascal said, and I agree, was based upon the Barry Allen in this movie. Yes, because one thing that the Flash TV show has that people had started to get tired of by the time we got to the end of the show was uh, they kept reusing the Flashpoint storyline too many times. The first time it happened, you understood this was the catalyst for it. But then the next and, season it happened. And you were still okay. Right. And then the third season it happened. Like, and by uh, the fourth time, we were kind of getting tired of seeing that storyline. So it seemed the entire show's storyline was based around adapting Flashpoint until they finally decided to do something else later. But the thing kept being, he would go back in time, fix something, then something else would be changing the future. And it kept being back and forth. And that ended up being a whole thing with this series. And also, this movie itself, if you've seen it, great. If you haven't, it may be a spoiler, but it's 2013, it's 10 years old, so we're going to go ahead and say it. Mm -hmm. One of the episodes, or two-part actually, in the series came from the storyline of this movie where Barry wants to go back and try to save his mom. Yes. And we actually saw that storyline in the Flash, I'm sorry, with the same outcome as right. he did in this movie. Right. And the, the one who 
took out the mom is still the same. So if you've seen that show, the Flash CW show, then you'll probably know what's coming if you've seen that before this movie. And the but thing, it's not the same thing. I want you to know that the movie is entirely different from that. It's just right. that that storyline, that episode came from this movie. Right. It's just with this movie, the further along it got into near the very end of the film, the worse things got. Basically, if Barry saved his mom, the world would end in a nuclear explosion. I am. And, that is literally the outcome. And instead of um, Batman's dad being taken out, Batman himself is taken out. The wife turns to Joker, and he becomes a brooding, much more brooding than his son Batman. Right, and alcoholic on top of it. <laughs> and you have Aquaman become, and Wonder Woman become criminals in here. Yeah, they start a war. To be a Boy Scout, who everyone hates in this version because he's a Boy Scout. Right, everyone. He was the only Boy Scout in a world full of brooding, dark, and grim people. So it was like he was irritating to them instead of the other way around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's the Aquaman, and one of them started an Atlantean Amazon war. We won't tell you why. Right, and yet still the humans were punished for it. So go figure. It's like, what, what do we do? <laughs> I think the thing that was the most jarring when we first watched this. And they showed Paradise Island, and the Amazons came out, and you knew which one immediately was Wonder Woman. Right. And they captured Steve Trevor. Mm-hmm. And you were like, oh, okay, this is going to help. This is going to be nice. Wow, Steve Trevor survived in here. He got older. Oh, they're going to meet, and it's going to crack. Uh, yeah. They hung him, and it was like, uh. No, never mind then. <laughs> yeah, and. Just about everyone in this universe, aside from Cyborg, had no problem taking another person's life. Didn't matter if they were the villain, a hero, a bystander, someone on a mission. If they thought they need to be taken out, their lives were go over. And another movie that borrowed from Flashpoint Paradox is the Justice League movie with the storyline of Superman. Yes. In here, um, Superman did not end up with the Kents. He actually crashed into Metropolis. And as goes the alien storyline like E.T. He was taken away by the government and he was kept underneath a red light his entire life. So he was malnourished. He was not the man of steel. He had been there his whole life and they thought he was like a, a walking, living destruction. So he was a completely different from how you see him in the regular movies. Now I know in Justice League, before you say it guys, that he was dead and they brought him back. Here he was, as you said, imprisoned, and then he didn't realize that any earthlings or humans care. So they rescued him, and they kept saying, we're your friends, so he got friends, then he saw people try to kill his friends, and then when he got to the yellow sunlight, it was all over. Right? (laughs) (laughs) So at the time this was made and these stories were made, they were really unique ideas. This was before... Disney and other companies really got carried away with doing alternate universes, alternate realities, AUs, what ifs, parallel worlds, evil twins. Now everybody does alternate versions of everything and time travel that depending on how you feel on that particular trope, this can feel like, oh wow, this is what started it all, or I've seen this enough, I don't want to see it anymore. <laughs> well, for us it was, oh wow, this is what started it all. And when we first saw it years ago, the Flash hadn't taken the storyline from here. Right. So years later, of course, after seeing that storyline and then rewatching this, it's like, oh wow, okay, this is Barry Allen's Flash. Right. And again, it was really well done and they had a fantastic voice cast. Not only some well known voice actors, but also some actors, Hollywood actors, I would say, like uh, Dana Delaney and C. Thomas Howell that were in here, which was really a big surprise. Mm-hmm. And Kevin Conroy Batman is in this movie. Yes, absolutely. And even though you only saw the regular Justice League for maybe a few minutes in the beginning, a few minutes at the end, it, it kind of gave you vibes. If you've seen the 2013 Titan show, it reminded you a lot of that episode how long is forever where Starfire went to the future and she saw the Titans were split apart, which I guess in a way was the Titans version of Flashpoint. Mm-hmm. And when Barry came back and told them what had happened, he remembered both timelines happening and they couldn't believe that 
they had become that twisted in their reality and it became more of a thing like they have to really make sure that they never become those people in that timeline no matter what happens or like the justice lords in that series now at the conclusion of the movie there were a couple of things that really were poignant and touching and two scenes that actually made me cry mm -hmm. although they were very short one involves Batman, one involves Flash, and one in, let's see, Batman and Flash together, mm -hmm. and then one involved Batman and Flash in the regular timeline, mm -hmm. and then the third one was as crazy as they had gotten, Wonder Woman and Aquaman, we won't spoil it for you, right. but it was like, wow, they missed all this action, all this violence, all this story writing, everything, they still managed to get in some parts that really were heart-wrenching mm -hmm. and made you happy that yay there is a bittersweet happy ending in this movie right and before i get to the artwork i want to touch on that mm -hmm. is that i had we actually i think yeah i did i have seen a video in the past where they talk about like different ways of telling stories in animation and one of the common things is like why are there so many dark themes in movies now this was before this was made and at that time it said well you can't really have light without dark and by that it said when a dark thing happens in a movie a dark adventure or seeing everything going wrong it makes people appreciate the happiness at the beginning and at the end because you know it's going to be all right. The hero is going to win. And you appreciate when that time's over and they are celebrating being free. So when you did dark stories, it was like just something that was the conflict. And it was something that had to be defeated. In here, it kind of stays the dark for almost the entire film. Even when it starts out, it starts out dark. Yeah. And then all the way until like maybe the last few minutes does it become, like you said, the bittersweet. So I guess before they want to start writing unhappy endings, this was meant to be like, even though this outcome happened and he couldn't go back and change it without making things worse, there were still things to appreciate in the timeline he was in. Heroes. Yes. <laughs> so this really was a great movie the first time it was very jarring mm -hmm. but now we've seen so many western animated shows the theatrical movies and anime right this is like <laughs> wow we're used to it but then on the flip side or reverse side it still hits hard mm -hmm. 10 years later it's still yes. like wow it's this is no less jarring, no less shocking, no less violent, no less making an impression upon you when you watch it, even yeah. if you've watched a whole bunch of other things. Yeah. Still, when you watch this, it's like, whoa. Right. And then you go, 2013? Really? Oh my gosh, this is a now? It stands up to time mm -hmm. where this could be released now if it hadn't been released in 2013. It could have been an older script, 10 years old, and right. it did, and it would fit in right with everything that's done now. That's yes. how well written and how well this well done this movie was. Yes, absolutely. Now you're talking about the artwork. Yeah. The only thing that, you know, if you have an issue with violence, which is understandable, might want to wait a little bit before you watch this. The only other thing that was jarring was the art style. No, the whole thing was jarring. But in addition... <laughs> That's the other thing that was jarring. The art style, it was fine until you start looking at the characters' bodies. And we get that every movie has their own... Well, it had their own art style for a while. Then they started just using the same artist for a bunch of them for a time. And we get this is just how the person does and the artwork. And it was Phil Barbosa? I think so. I think this one who did the Young Justice first two seasons of Young Justice. Right. And a lot Barbarossa. of them... Right, thank you. And a lot of them just look really weird in here. Like, there's one movie where they're super, super muscled and it doesn't even look right. In here, they got a little small head and then the torso will be huge, the arms will be huge, the faces look, I guess, tougher or rougher or something and then it's like, what happened to you? And it's just before the Flashpoint thing began. <laughs> Yeah. So that might be a little weird for you to look at for a little bit. Definitely. I just want to give a shout out to a few more of the voice actors. Michael B. Jordan, mm -hmm. K. 
Kevin McKidd, Justin Chamber, Chambers, I'm sorry. Um, who's the one who did Wonder Woman? Um, when you watch it, you're just gonna recognize a whole bunch of voices. So yeah. we won't keep going and, and ruin it for you if you haven't seen it. Now, if you have seen Justice League, The Flashpoint Paradox, let us know what you think in the comments below. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Do you think it's held up to time being 10 years old and it still fits in with everything that's going on right now in Western comics and Western theatrical uh, comic book adaptation, adapted movies, I should say. If you haven't seen it, hopefully you'll find it at your local some type of dollar store. Right. <laughs> that it is available to purchase on Amazon. Possibly it's on is it HBO that has the DC Yes, content? the DC movie. Possibly. But if you haven't seen it, it's definitely one of the great animated DC movies you got to watch. You yes. actually have to watch it. It should be one at the top of your list. Yes, absolutely. And if you haven't already, subscribe for updates and weekly videos on your favorite anime series, anime shows, and all things animation. Yes, and thank you so much for watching and for supporting us. We really do appreciate you. And if you want to take a look at your channel, leave us the name in the comments below. Better yet, a link. We'll click on it, check you out, and support you as well. Yes. So, thank you so much for watching. I'm Roscoe Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a fantastic day. Peace.